All right, welcome back to the 8-1.3 assignment. We just finished up, up going over example one where we were looking at a power of a power and we determined that the only thing that you really have to do here is you're going to keep your base and then multiply your exponents. Um, so this is when you're raising a power to a power. Now in the next example, we're looking for a pattern. Um, so if you look in this example here, and I'll fill the whole screen with it, we have x times y, and we're taking this and raising it to the fourth power. So if we think about what the definition of a power is, we need four factors of xy multiplied together. So we have xy times xy times xy times xy. Now using our associative and commutative properties, we can change the order and we can change the grouping. So all we're doing here is taking the x's, one, two, three, four of them, and then putting them in a group and then putting all the y's together, one, two, three, four y's together. And then we can determine, okay, like we have four x's here that we're multiplying together. We can switch that back into a power, so x to the fourth power because there are four factors of x. And same idea, there are four factors of y, so we can write that as y to the fourth. Um, so that's the first example. And the second example here, they have 6AB and we're raising that to the third power. So we need three factors of this 6AB. So we've got 6AB times 6AB times 6AB. And again, just like what we did, um, we did it on yesterday's assignment where we, we changed the order and made sure that all of the numbers go together, all of the A's go together, all of the B's go together. That's what we're doing again. So we've got 6 times 6 times 6, all of the 6's are together. A times A times A, all of the A's are together, and then B times B times B, all of the B's are together. So this can be rewritten as you have six, um, sorry, you have three factors of six, so you can write that as six to the third power. You have one, two, three factors of A, so that's A to the third power, and then you have three factors of B, um, so that's b to the third. Now you could take this a step further and you could put into your calculator 6 to the third. Um, if you're practicing doing that, you would just do 6 and then the caret and then 3. And it does indeed come out to be 216. So that is, that is a, a, a better way to do it, to have that simplified out to 216. Um, but it demonstrates what the pattern is a little bit better when it's written this way. So the pattern I hope that you're, you're kind of seeing is that we are taking this exponent and we're distributing it to each, um, to each variable, I guess. Or in this case, we're going to distribute it to the number and to each variable. So in English, what I'm trying to describe to you is that to find the power of a product, you're going to find the power of each factor, so each piece that you're multiplying together, and then you're going to multiply. Um, so what this looks like, for all numbers A and B and any integer M, it's gonna look like this. We've got, oop, we've got, I don't want red, I want blue. A, B, so I'm multiplying A times B, and I'm raising it to the M power. Now all this means is that we are taking this m and distributing it to each of the factors here. So we're gonna end up with a to the m power and b to the m power. Um, now with numbers involved with it, um, if we had something that looked like this where we had negative two xy, this one has three total factors, the negative two, the x, and the y, and we're gonna raise it to the third power, you would distribute to each factor. So I am looking at negative two to the third. We've got x to the third and y to the third. Now we're almost there with our answer, um, but we need to make sure that we know that we've got this so that it's just a, a constant, like a number, a coefficient, I guess would be more correct. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my calculator. You have to make sure that you put the negative 2 in parentheses and then cube it. Um, we get negative 8. So negative 8 
x to the third, y to the third is the correct answer. Um, so you have to be really careful when you go to square or cube or raise any negative number to a power because it has to be negative. Uh, or it, it does have to be negative, but it has to be in parentheses, forgive me. All right, now we're going to take a look at some examples that are a little bit more challenging. Like this was easy because our x and y, um, they're, they weren't raised to a power. Like the you could think of it as the exponent was just a 1. Um, now we're going to look at some examples here where we have like y to the 5th. Or, or in this one we have q to the 7th. So this is what this is going to look like. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to distribute to each factor. So what that means is we're looking at 3 squared, then we're going to have y to the fifth squared, and then z squared. So all I did was distribute that exponent to each of the factors. From here we have to do a little bit of simplifying. So 3 squared, if you wanted to put that into your calculator, 3 squared is 9, or you could just think of it as 3 times 3 is 9. And then now we're using um, this idea of raising a power to a power like what we went over in the first video with that example 1. So when you have a power raised to a power, um, hopefully you remember that this is when you are multiplying your exponents. So 5 times 2 is going to give you 10. So we've got y to the 10th, and then z squared is already in a good spot. So our answer, like this is our answer, like we're given the expression, and this is the answer in its simplified form. So we distribute the exponent to each factor, and then we just simplify those pieces. All right, let's try it again with this example here. So we're going to start by distributing the square to each factor. So we've got 9 squared, we've got p squared, and we've got q to the 7th squared. Hopefully my writing's getting a little bit sloppy, but hopefully you can read that. Now we just need to, um, we need to do some simplifying. And I really don't like the variable q because it looks like my 9, so we just have to be careful with this. So I've got 9 squared, or you could think of it as 9 times 9. Regardless, it comes out to be 81. We've got the p squared, that, that looks good. And then we have to simplify this. We can't have um, powers raised to powers. So when we do have powers raised to powers, we're just thinking, okay, we need to multiply these exponents. So 7 times 2 is going to be 14. So it's going to be q to the 14th power. All right. So as a review, just going over one more time, when you have a product, so something that's multiplied together, so in this case 3 times y to the 5th times z, and you raise that product to a power, you need to distribute the power to each of the factors. And then you have to look, perhaps you might have um, a power raised to a power. So like here with the y to the fifth to the second. Um, if you are raising a power to a power, then you have to remember that you need to multiply the exponents. All right. Your job now that you've watched both videos, you are going to attempt these six problems. Um, it appears that when I'm looking at this, number 19 and 20 will be like example 1, and then 21, 22, 23, and 24 will be like example 2. So do your best if you have questions. Don't hesitate to get on Zoom and ask those. All right. Good luck, guys.